Player TV, I've got more updates for you from the LAPCE here at the Commerce. The $5,000 buy-in No Limit Hold'em Tournament attracted 184 players and first place in this tournament is getting $285,000. A few of the players competing are Chris Ferguson who seems a little distracted, Jared Hamby and the most recent F-Tops main event winner Adam Geyer. The $1,500 buy-in shootout event is almost to its first round. One of the players who won their first table is Roy Winston. We caught up with him just after his win to talk about a little shootout strategy. All right, Roy, you just won your first table in the shootout. When you got heads up, it looked like you had a big chip lead. Tell me how the table went and how you accumulated so many chips. Well, you know, it was one of those tournaments that went well right early on. I flopped a set, and uh, a gentleman pushed in against me, and I got a very quick double up right out of the box. And it's always good in these, these if you can get a little chips early. Um, and it went well for me. I did lose a few coin flips, by and large. You know, I, I have to be honest, I ran pretty well in it. And then by the time I got the heads up, I had a huge, I think I started the heads up with 36,000 and he had 4,000. So it's a huge advantage and, and he played well. Uh, I was just uh, fortunate to get the right hands in the right situations. Cool. Now, do you play a lot of shootouts? Maybe online or? I do. I play a lot of the shootouts online I, and I love the shootout format. Um, and, and they're fun. You know, I, I did really well uh, in the shootout at the World Series two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Almost won my second table, just missed, got a little unlucky. But there, it's a fun format. I love sit-and-goes, and the shootout is just a glorified sit-and-go. Right, that's what I was just going to ask you. So do you, you just transfer your sit-and-go strategy right to um, your first table for shootout? When you're sitting down and you're nine or ten-handed, what kinds of things are you thinking about? Are you, starting, are you starting to come out of the gates early, or are you kind of feeling your way through? Because sometimes sometimes these tables go a little fast. Right, no, I don't come out of the gate early. Matter of fact, I'm extremely patient. And you know, I, I honestly, I gotta say, I, I watch I watched great sit-and-go players. Maybe one of the greatest I've watched over time is Havad Khan, who I think is a brilliant sit-and-go player. And I've played a bunch of sit-and-goes where he's there, and he's super patient early on. And with your aggression factor dialing up as the table gets shorter, and the blinds increase in relation to the uh, stack size. So I think um, patience early in a sit-and-go is necessary. But also, you know, I see a guy, one, one of the guys here laid down queens early to a big pre-flop raise, and we're starting with 4,000 chips, you know, the hand like queens, I don't think I could get away from that early. So, so I think you have to know where to make your stands and know where to where to throw away hands. Okay, now one more question. When you do get short hands and your aggression factor has to go up, are you, would you take gambles, with maybe three or four handed because you know that you have to win? Or would you still kind of try and sit back because survival is still the key? Survival's survival is the key. I don't like to take too big a gamble. If I feel like I'm a big favorite, I, I don't like to play coin flips. I think that, and it's funny, I had this discussion with somebody recently, I hate coin flips because I feel like I can get my money in much better than 50-50. Now when you're short, you know, you pick up ace queen and you're going to shove in hoping to get a coin flip. Sure. But when you have chips, I think you're, it's crazy to play coin flips because you can get your money in better, be patient, um, take your time. Uh, and even Mike Matisau and I have sat around and discussed this strategy and our big joke is we don't like to gamble in a tournament until we're heads up. Mm -hmm. You know, no gambling, multi hand And, you know, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I think you, I think too often people, they pick up a little something and, you know, they have a bottom pair and a back door this and a side door this and they're shoving yeah. all their chips in and then you lose your out. You know, if as long as you're surviving, you have a chance to catch a little rush, get a few good hands, make people make bad decisions against you. And that's Even really, in a winner take all situation? Yeah, I, I think so. And I've had okay. plenty of times in, in the World Series two years ago, uh, I got to heads up, I had 10% of the chips, the other guy had 90% of the chips, and I battled back to beat him. Yet if I gambled quickly earlier, I probably, you know, I, if you're in it, you always have that chance to come back. And, you know, one thing I think that's interesting, if you look at people um, who make final tables, look where they were when there were 20 people left, and the guy who wins it frequently is a very short stack when there's 20, 30 people left. Look at, look at Bill Edler and the... Uh, WPT a couple of years ago where he, he had one big blind left with 20 people and he wins it. So so I really think you, I mean, you have to get a little lucky. Do you have to catch a rush? Yes, but the strategy of getting as many chips really aggressively, quickly as possible, I think that won't usually pan out. So do you think that that's a mistake players make, especially in these shootouts, because they're so focused on knowing that they have to win, that they don't have to take gambles when late in the tournament when they think they have to. Right, and I think a lot of people can't lay a hand down. I think right. that's and, and I think that's one of the things that transforms a player is when you can get away from bad marginal situations and save your chips. That really makes a huge difference. That's a good point. Well, thank you so much, Roy. Thanks, Andrew. And good luck in the next round. Thanks very much, guys. For the $10,000 Heads Up Championship, players are starting to get into the money. Check out carplayer.com's live updates for more results.
I'm Christiana at 4 Carpenter TV.